Welcome back, everybody, to our next five-minute paranormal, and this is, as promised, part two of Dudley Town. So I believe where we left things off was the strange encounter, the man and his car in the middle of the woods. So now we're moving on to our experience at nighttime in Dudley Town. So we are just getting ready to head into the town proper, or rather what was left of the town, the crumbling foundations, ruins, etc. And we're standing in a big group, just waiting to move forward. And then suddenly it grew cold. There was a noticeable change in temperature. Everyone felt it. It had been a warm day. It was springtime, so it must have been in the 70s, maybe. And yes, it, it gets cooler at night in the spring in New England. Absolutely. I'm not denying that, but it just suddenly just got cold. And that freaked everyone out just a little bit. So we're headed toward full dark. And this is the part of the experience where we get left either as individuals or with small groups at different locations throughout Dudley Town. I opted to do the small group experience. I was not quite ready to do a solo in this supposedly most haunted place in the country or one of the most haunted places in the country. So it was my buddy. Uh, and a girl that we were both friends with decided that we would be, we would endure what was going to be 10 minutes of alone time without any flashlights in one of the foundations throughout the town. And the goal was to see, to see what we experienced, to see what we as humans tapped into being in nature, being in this haunted place and where everything intersects and overlaps. And I don't think this is something that that a teacher could probably get away with today, but I'm glad. I'm glad that we had the opportunity to experience this. So we are sitting huddled close together. Noticeably all of us are on edge. We're not really talking. We're just sitting there in the dark conversation was not really encouraged because the essence of the experience was being out there in the dark, being out there in the silence. And I can't recall if I mentioned this in the first part of the video, but it is just so unnervingly silent in this part of the woods. You know, we did our daytime tour and it was just, it was too quiet, especially for the spring when the the insects are, are supposed to be chirping and the birds tweeting away in the trees and the animals running around, but it was just it was just unsettlingly quiet. And that felt to the extreme as we're sitting there in the dark, where the silence had a real genuine weight to it. It felt like a substantial thing. I remember listening to Mr. Gillette walk off through the woods with the rest of the remaining students to be dropped off for their experience and remember just hearing his voice fade and the sounds of the walking and the other students fade it was almost like the night swallowed up any sign that we were there with others so it's it's still getting colder and again that could have been the weather but i just it was that cold that you feel in your bones and I start hearing sounds out in the trees. It sounds like things are, are moving around. At one point, I heard what sounded like a screen door, like a creak open and then slam shut. And what's strange about that is no doors in Dudley Town. It's just foundations. And the nearest house is miles away. And while I know sound does travel, it seemed a stretch for sound to travel that far. So at this point, my eyes had been open, but when we heard that loud bang, everyone shut their eyes and suddenly we were just a knot of limbs. <laughs> everyone 
clustered together as close as we possibly could get. And it just, you felt this surge of energy, this rising energy. The night felt electrified. We kept hearing sounds. Uh, I could have sworn I heard some uh, disembodied voices. And I even saw strange things behind my closed eyes, which maybe I'll get into uh, in another story or maybe in an episode of Don't Turn Around. And time just seemed to grind to a halt. So we're hearing noises. We're hearing voices. I smell distinctly smoke, like it's like hearth or fireplace smoke. Uh, but and there was a fireplace in the foundation that we were in, or the remains of a fireplace, but it was completely filled with water. <laughs> that fireplace had not seen a fire in a long time. So at last, after I, I know my friends were praying out loud. I was saying some silent prayers for my own, <laughs> for my own sake. And once that time was up and we heard Mr. Gillette coming back and we could, we could hear just by the footfalls, the sound was so different than the other movement that we heard that, I mean, why would all of a sudden the animals get active, Right when it had been silent otherwise throughout the day and, and in the evening, why would the animals suddenly get active and start moving around? I'm not saying it wasn't animals moving around, but there were definite moments where it sounded like footsteps, and I thought either one of our fellow students was going to show up or Mr. Gillette was going to show up, or it was something that I very much did not want to see approaching us there in the foundation of that building. Did I feel like the energy in Dudley Town was evil or or malicious or had some ill will toward us? I don't know. I can't say. It was it was so intense to defy any description of good, evil or otherwise. It was just intense. So there's a as with many haunted places, like haunted abandoned towns and whatnot. It said you can't or should not absolutely under no circumstance take something from that lo location with you as a souvenir. And in particular, with Dudley Town, there was plenty of stories about the curse of Dudley Town traveling with you. Well, I had a friend, and she took a small rock from one of the foundations as a souvenir. Shortly after returning, maybe within days... Uh, she got into a car accident and totaled her car. In a separate incident, she broke her leg. And this we're talking in the span of days after returning with that stone. So with the help of a friend, she went back up to Dudley Town and deposited that stone where she had found it roughly. And after that, things returned to normal. No more bad luck. And so there you have it, the abbreviated version of my Dudley Town experience. Maybe we'll get into it a little more again here on the OSI channel. Maybe I'll get into it a little more on Don't Turn Around. In fact, I have a sister who went to Dudley Town several years before me, and she's very likely coming on to Don't Turn Around to talk about her experience, and we can swap notes, and uh, we will certainly share that here on this channel as well. Have you ever been to Dudley Town? Have you had experiences in those deep, dark woods? Well, we would love to hear you. So please make sure to drop a comment in the comment section. We love when people comment on our videos. And in fact, even if you haven't been to Dudley Town, let me know what you think about my experiences there. And while you're doing that, you can like, subscribe, and enable notifications so you know when content like this, the 5-Minute Paranormals, full episodes, side quests, and all the other good things are going live. So you can... Get that content ASAP into your eyes. Don't forget to check out our members only section. We'll continue to add content to that section as time goes on. And we're really hoping to see that community grow as well. And that's it for today, folks. Thank you so much for watching. We here at Old Spirits deeply appreciate all of your support. And with that said, take care, stay safe, and we'll see you in the field.